well, look, you became a Lutheran, and now you can do things like drink beer and play cards and dance. And Exactly. <laughs> Be- beer is a sin, said no Lutheran yeah. ever. <laughs> Bringing you law, gospel, and guns. Welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio. Welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, and this is episode 49, brought to you by Cook's Holsters, American-made custom Kydex holsters with a lifetime warranty and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, cooksholsters.com. Welcome to the show. Thank you all for listening, downloading, and subscribing. With Christmas coming up, we're going to do something a little different. We've got a Christmas wish list show today. I tasked each of uh, each of my contributors with one thing. Don't give me a tip this week. Talk about what you are interested in, what you hope Santa Claus is bringing you this Christmas, what you hope you'll find under the Christmas tree when Christmas rolls around. So we've got um, a fun segment from Mia. Sergeant Bill brings us his letter to Santa Claus. Aaron's got uh, his list. Pastor Bennett has a list for us. And we've got a couple of guests, Cassie and Patrick Coburn from Guns for Gals here in uh, McKinney, Texas. And then we'll also be talking for the first time with our wonderful sponsor, Bob Cook from Cook's Holsters is going to join us to talk about his road from starting out making holsters in the basement to a full-time career making holsters. We're going to have a lot of fun on today's episode. It's uh, a Merry Christmas Christmas wish list episode coming up after this right here on Armed Lutheran Radio. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. With those words, our founding fathers changed the world. They launched an experiment in freedom where common lawful citizens are free to speak and gather and worship as they choose. But first among those freedoms is the one freedom that makes the rest possible. For 130 years, we've worked to preserve freedom first. I'm Wayne LaPierre of the National Rifle Association. Pistols, prayer, and potluck. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Hey folks, this is Aaron Israel with Fundamental Defense, and instead of a personal defense tip this week, in the spirit of Christmas, I'm going to give you my Christmas wish list. This Christmas is really all about functionality for me. In Christmas's past, it's been all about new guns and accessories, but this year, I'm looking at what the gear nerd in me might find much less exciting, but nonetheless, here's my list. First off, I've been looking for a better way to stage my defensive firearms inside my house. While I have quick access safe staged with defensive handguns at strategic locations in the house, those don't make very good decorations, and they usually have to go inside of a cabinet or something if they're in the living room, and they just don't mesh with the uh, decor that my wife has picked out for the house. Also, I have defensive rifles and shotguns that I would like to have staged, but don't want to have them just sitting out where my daughter can get access to them, which would obviously be a problem. A new alternative staging option has come up in the past couple years called Tactical Walls, and that's at the top of my Christmas wish list. Tactical Walls is a company that makes shelves, mirrors, lamps, clocks, etc., all types of home decor furniture items that have secret locked compartments inside them where you can store your defensive firearms. The secret compartments come with foam inserts that you can cut out to fit your defensive firearm of choice. And if you buy one of those little plastic trigger guards with a little lanyard on it, you can stage loaded guns just like you would inside of a quick access safe. The tactical walls are a cool alternative to sticking ugly lock boxes around your house, and they give you the option of hiding the guns and staging them in plain sight in a way that goes with your home decor. A little pro tip there Use that home decor piece as a selling point with your significant other, and all of a sudden, buying new furniture can become a win-win. 
So go to tacticalwalls.com and check out their selection. They've got a lot of cool ways to store your defensive handguns in plain sight and have access to them in case you ever need them in a home defense emergency. The second thing I have on my wish list is cool clothing. That's K-U-H-L. It's durable range attire that I like to wear at the range and at work. I work in the oil and gas industry for my full-time job, and so when I go to the warehouse or to the field from time to time to check on my guys, I need clothing that'll stand up to some abuse in less than sterile environments out in the elements, which that same kind of clothes can also work well for range wear. The most durable pants and jackets i found come from the Cool line. You can find this brand at REI, Gander Mountain, and on the internet. The brand was originally designed for hiking in the outdoor lifestyle, but you can find both heavy and light duty fabrics depending on your needs and what you're looking for. If you, they got summer stuff and winter stuff, and it's really good material, really good construction. And, and if you're looking for a good pair of pants that are durable but don't stick out like a sore thumb like 5'11s and the other quote-unquote tactical type pants, Cool is a great compromise for having something that you can use for duty, that you can use out in the field, and that work great on the range, but don't make you look like some kind of tactical mall ninja. So my Christmas wish list is pretty straightforward this year, and it focuses on the functionality, and I'm looking for some tactical walls and some new cool pants and shirts. That said, I'm always in the market for new guns and gear, so if I get a new pistol or something like that or get some ammo in my stocking, I'm not going to be disappointed by that this year. I just don't have anything on my list that I have to have as far as guns and gear. Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Thank you for listening to my tips this past year, and may this season bless you and your family as you celebrate the birth of the Savior, Jesus Christ, and thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in 2017. Aaron Israel is a personal Defense Network contributor and owner of Fundamental Defense. You can find out more and sign up for any of Aaron's classes at FundamentalDefense.com. Over and above our own body, spouse, and temporal possessions, we have another treasure, honor and a good reputation. If you're forced to use your firearm in self-defense, it's very likely that you will have to fight to clear your name after the fight for your life is over. Do you have $10,000 on hand to retain an attorney? Have you got cash readily available to make bail so that you don't have to sit in a jail cell somewhere while your family and friends are trying to scrape together enough cash money to get you out? Armed citizens. Citizens Legal Defense Network can give you peace of mind knowing that you have the financial and legal assistance to face this new threat to your liberty, your property, and your good name. Become a member today for just $135 a year by visiting armedcitizensnetwork.com and using the tracking code 15625 or Paul Lathrop, that's L-A-T-H-R-O-P, when you sign up. Can you survive the legal aftermath of self-defense? Join Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network today. Armedcitizensnetwork.com. Use the tracking code 15625 or Paul Lathrop. Bringing you law, gospel, and guns. You're listening to Armed Lutheran Radio. Hey, I'm Sergeant Bill, and this is your Ballistic Minute. Today, my Christmas letter to Santa. Dear Santa, what I want for Christmas this year, as far as guns and gun stuff. There's not really a lot of guns that I want, but I came up with a couple. First off, I'd like to get a SIG 320 compact in 9mm for my wife, because she needs it for a carry gun. Uh, I'd like to have a 16-inch AR 5.56 upper, and maybe a 10-inch AR pistol upper, also in 5.56, to finish out some rifle builds I've been working on. Um, I got to shoot an optic mounted, uh, you know, a slide ride optic on a XD. So since I like Glocks, I'd love to have a Glock 17 or maybe 19 MOS, which is the modular optic system. And maybe to round it all out, a uh, yeah, maybe a Springfield loaded 1911, a five or four inch model in either nine or 45 or both. There's lots of other play guns that I'd like to get that are just would be kind of fun to have and shoot, like a Chris Vector or something like that. But most of the guns that I have have uses for home defense, carry, competition. I don't have a whole lot of play guns. Now, on to the gun stuff. 
I really could use a new 9mm barrel for my STI 9, uh, 1911 since I blew up the barrel on it a few weeks ago. Ouch, that hurt. I could really use some new sights for my Glock 21. Preferably adjustable. If I was to get that MOS Glock, I'd love to have a, a red dot for it, like a Vortex Venom with a 3 MOA dot. That would be really fun. Since my single stack USPSA gun is blown up and needs repair right now, maybe I could get a USPSA holster rig for like a Glock 34 or 17 with a double belt and mag pouches and holster and the holster hanger. That'd be awesome. Let's see, what else is there? I've also had my eye on a Vortex Crossfire 1 to 4 rifle scope for an AR. I think that would be a lot of fun with my vision not as what it used to be that would be really neat to shoot be able to stretch out that 5.56 five, round to further distances more accurately most of all I guess I'd like some tight grip powder some 9mm 45 brass some Winchester small pistol and large pistol primers and then lots and lots of coated molly bullets so that I could load them all up and practice and shoot matches and have fun and I guess that's pretty much it what do you have on your Christmas list? This has been your Ballistic Minute with Sergeant Bill. Hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. Sergeant Bill Sylvia is a 15-year veteran of the Dallas Police Department and master class competitive shooter. You can watch Sergeant Bill's shooting videos at armedlutheran.us forward slash Sergeant Bill. Okay, you have your concealed carry license, but you and I both know that's definitely not training. Do you have the ability to carry your gun comfortably, draw safely, and get at least two shots on target quickly? How about shooting on the move, engaging multiple bad guys, and shooting one-handed? These are real-world scenarios you don't get to practice in your concealed carry class or at a public shooting range. If you feel you need to sharpen these types of skills, let me invite you to take the Beyond Concealed Carry training with Bob Main of the Handgun World Podcast and Ben Branham of the Modern Self-Protection Podcast. Bob and Ben have been training people to defend themselves with a handgun for the past four years in cities throughout the United States. Self-Defense Radio Network listeners get a $25 discount off the class tuition and $15 discount on the supporting videos on the Shooters Club website. They might be teaching in a city near you in 2017. Just visit the listener discount page at www.selfdefenseradio.net to sign up and use the password SDRN, that's all lowercase by the way, to get these discounts. Hi. This is Reverend Ken Blanchard, also known as the Black Man with a Gun. And you're listening to my friend and brother from another mother, the Armed Lutheran. Hey, everybody. It is great to be here with you again. I am coming to you today from the beautiful mountains of Colorado, and it is time to hunt for fabulous presents for our friends and family and those who love shooting, hunting, and the great outdoors – or maybe one or two of whom we'd like to encourage to embrace the aforementioned. <laughs> Every year on my Motivations website, I share some great ideas suited to this category. And today I'll have to give you a little peek at just a few from this year's list. I always share jewelry ideas because guess what guys and gals, jewelry is always a good idea. You'll have to use your judgment as far as to how many carrots are required. <laughs> Just teasing. These ideas really won't break the bank. So, first of all, I want to tell you about one which my husband and I bought our daughter. It's a Swarovski crystal and spent casing type of jewelry, and it's made by Pretty Hunter. The one we bought her is a red, white, and blue patriotic-themed dog tag. In fact, they have all sorts of designs and patterns over there. And talking about this and our young lady, it also leads me to another idea. She also has a leather cuff bracelet, which she was given by Lisa of Camo Ammo Jewelry. And this leather cuff has 12 gauge casings and it's available in other cartridges and calibers as well. The cuff is a rough and tough kind of rustic look, but I also myself have a bold yet elegantly designed cuff that Kia Ve gave me. And this one is a little bit more girly. These spent casing types of jewelry are really fun gifts. 
Another idea for some of those on your list who are not yet shooters, or heck, even if they are shooters, is the one of a shooting class. Get them that for a gift. Get them a certificate. And as you know, we can all use additional training. If you don't want to go that far, my friend Gabby Franco gave me her book and it's called Troubleshooting, A Guide to Mastering Your Shooting Skills. This I would suggest after you've actually taken a course, but it's a self-improvement book and it's great for any level of handgun shooters and it really helps for us to work on improving our shots. So of course, speaking of shooting, I'm going to tell you what I'm hoping for this Christmas. That is the Kimber K6S, which I have mentioned to you all before. Now, now, you don't have to get the Kimber as a gift, but hey, even the most popular Christmas movie ever shares a gun, the BB gun, that is, of course. So you can look for Red Riders, Crickets, Kimbers, or maybe other firearms might be the ticket. Of course, you'll want to assess the recipient's skills, their needs, and their potential growth when you're looking for a gun that will match them. Many of my favorite gifts in the past are those of a Taurus Judge, a Benelli Super Black Eagle, and a Kimber Ultra Carry. Those have been great for me in the past. I know it's not really the reason for the season, but if you're going to take the step to give gifts, heck, why not make it fun and memorable? Be safe out there, good luck, and Merry Christmas. You can read more from Mia and watch her YouTube videos at MiaAnstein.com. If you carry a gun for personal protection, it's imperative that you get a good holster. When I started out, I had no idea what that meant, and I went through a bunch of really bad holsters. Then I found Cook's Holsters at CooksHolsters.com. Cook's Holsters are custom made to fit your specific firearm. Available in lots of colors, including custom printed Kydex, Cook's Holsters are made in the USA and the great state of Georgia, and come with a lifetime warranty against defects and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Guarantee. Visit www.cooksholsters.com and use the promo code Armed Podcast and get a 15% discount off everything in the store. You put a lot of time and money into the firearm you choose to carry for personal protection. Carry it in the best holster. Cooksholsters.com. Hello, this is Pastor Brian Wolfmuller of Table Talk Radio. Hey, pay attention because you're listening to Armed Lutheran Radio. Hey everyone, this is Pastor John Bennett. So what's at the top of my Christmas wish list? Well, I actually have two items. One is about practicality and the other is just pure fun. Well, first for the practical, a few episodes back, Aaron Israel had talked about the importance of staging. Where in your home do you have your easy access safe? Now, most easy access safes have one of two opening mechanisms. Either they require a PIN code or they have a biometric fingerprint reader. Now, to me, both of these designs have a major drawback. When seconds count and mean the difference between life and death, can you guarantee that you're going to enter that PIN code the first time, the right time, every time? I know with my primary gun safe, there's been times where I've been in a hurry and I didn't enter that code correctly, and the gun safe wouldn't open. There's actually been a few times where I entered the incorrect code multiple times and was locked out for five minutes. Well, there's also a drawback with the biometric safes. The biometric safes were intended to fix that problem, but based on the experience that I've had with my newer smartphone, sometimes that fingerprint reader doesn't always work. Well, there's a new product out there that fixes both of the shortcomings of those two designs. Well, maybe not necessarily new, but newer. It's been around for about two years. It's called the gun box. This device has a unique mechanism for unlocking the safe. It uses RFID technology, and when you order your gun box, you can also order a ring or a wristband with an RFID chip implanted in it. So then all you have to do is wave your hand over the sensor on the gun box and it automatically opens up. It's really cool. It's been on my list for a while now. And they start at $200 for the cheapest model. 
Now on to the fun item. Every gun guy has their quote-unquote unicorn gun, that gun that just seems unattainable because of either the price tag or the rarity or a combination of the two. For me, that gun has always been the MP5. There's a few other guns on that list, but that one's right up there at the top. I don't know what it is about the MP5, but it's just awesome. But the problem is the price tag. If you can get your hands on a genuine HK MP5, you're looking at an easy five grand, if you can find one. There's a few clones out there, but those two, they start at about $2,000, and personally, I can't justify spending that kind of money. Well, there's another gun out there that's been available for a few years called the CZ Scorpion Evo. Those who have had an opportunity to spend some time at the range with this gun say that the ergonomics are almost identical to the MP5. It has the feel, the weight, the design that's very similar to the real deal. Now, I was fortunate enough to be able to handle one in the flesh at my local Cabela's. And it really is a neat gun. But I would say the one problem with it is that out of the box, it's got a horrible trigger. Now, not terribly uncommon for CZs. I have a CZ pistol that out of the box, the trigger was okay at best. But the trigger on the CZ Scorpion Evo, in all honesty, is just horrible. It weighs at almost 10 pounds. It's got that spongy feel to it. If you're going to get this gun, I highly recommend getting a trigger kit for it too. The CZ Custom Shop actually has a kit that runs about 250 bucks. There's a few other companies out there that specialize in kits for the trigger to lighten up that trigger pull. So all told, you'd have a little over a grand in it if you were to get it. Plus, it's also available as a carbine model and with the new IDPA pistol caliber carbine division, you could dominate while being the laughing stock of all of your shooting buddies. Well, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, God's blessings as you celebrate the birth of the Savior, and we'll talk to you next time. John Bennett is the pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Willow Creek, Minnesota. For more information, visit stjohnswillowcreek.org. It's the Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Needs. I'm Alan Gottlieb, founder of the Second Amendment Foundation. When someone says, we don't need that kind of gun, remind them the Founding Fathers determined what rights our Constitution should protect. There's a world of difference between rights and needs. It is not the function of government to tell us what we need or what we don't. Certainly no one needs an assault rifle or a Saturday Night Special, or for that matter, no one needs a Corvette with a high-capacity horsepower engine capable of speeds to 150 miles per hour. But in the hands of honest, responsible individuals, we have the right of choice. We have the right to read books others don't like. We have the right to listen to any radio program we choose. We have the right to dress the way we want to. We also have the right to own firearms of our choice. So the next time someone tells you, you don't need something, tell them. It's the Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Needs. Join the Second Amendment Foundation today so that this message and our Bill of Rights might live. Call 425-454-7012. That's 425-454. 454-7012. Armed Lutheran Radio comes with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you are not completely satisfied, the next episode is free. Welcome back to Armed Lutheran Radio on this special Christmas wish list episode. I tasked all of my contributors with coming up with a list of things that they want from Santa Claus this year. Um, and I was asked, I even asked our guests the same questions. What are you looking for for Christmas? What would you like to get for Christmas this year? Several people asked me the same question. And I had a hard time coming up with some ideas. And I finally put together a list. And the, the original release of this program had some ideas. I just threw out some things. And um, after giving it some thought and after hearing some of the other uh, wish lists, I've reconsidered and decided to re-record my, um, my wish list. I really don't need any guns. Guns are fun. Don't get me wrong. I would love to have more guns. You can always, you can never have too many, right? But the truth is I don't need any. Um, I'm kind of happy where I am with what I've got. So what I'm looking for this year is really simple. I'd like to get better with what I've got. 
I'd like to have some some bullets, some powder, some primers, some brass, so I can do some reloading, so I can do a lot more practice, so I can do a lot more training, so I can do a lot more, you know, go to a lot more matches. Yeah, I could use some more magazines. I could use some things like that. I really want to get better this year. So uh, there are opportunities out there for me to train more. There's, uh, there are things that I can get that will help me improve. And so that's what I'm looking for. There are going to be a handful of really good trainers who are going to be teaching within driving distance from where I currently live next year. Seeklander is going to be teaching some one and two day courses in the Tulsa area next year, starting in, I think in February that I would like to take. Ben Steger is going to be uh, in the Dallas area, I think in May. I think uh, Bob Vogel is going to be in Eagle Lake sometime in March, I think sometime in February or, or March. I can't remember which. Um, I'll have to consult with Aaron Israel on this one, but I think Rob Pincus is going to be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area as well. So those that's what I want. I originally had put out a list of, well, here's, you know, I, w- I would love to have these guns. I'd love to have this gun. I'd love to have that gun. Truth is, I really don't need a gun. I really want to get better with the guns that I've got. And there are some great training opportunities next year. You know, after hearing Mia's uh, segment and thinking about it, she's right. That's really, that would be a great opportunity next year. So I, I really, 2017, I really want to get a lot better. So for Christmas... Santa, if you're listening, I want some training from some top-notch instructors. You know, I got the bug after taking the one-day class from Aaron Israel this year, so I would like to I'd like to take a lot more training next year. Seeklander, Vogel, Steger, they're all in the area next year. Pincus, I want to get out there and learn and get better. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what's on my list for uh, Christmas this year. What's on your list? Uh, visit the feedback page at the website armedlutheran.us slash feedback and leave us a voice message using the microphone on your tablet or laptop or PC or send us an email. There's a an email form right there on the feedback page or you can call us 888-571-5552 and leave us a voicemail. Let us know what's on your list for Christmas this year. So you have your concealed carry permit or license to carry. Now what? Now you need a good holster. Not one of those cheap neoprene prophylactic holsters you can buy in the big box stores. You need a holster custom built for the firearm you intend to carry every day. Check out CooksHolsters.com. Made in the USA, Cooks Holsters are available in a wide range of colors and designs for inside the waistband or outside waistband carry. They carry a lifetime warranty against defects and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Visit www.CooksHolsters.com and use the promo code ARMEDPODCAST and take 15% off everything in the store. You put in the time and effort to legally carry a firearm for personal protection. Protect your firearm with a custom holster from CooksHolsters.com. Welcome back to this special Christmas wish list episode of Armed Lutheran Radio. There's been a growing trend of women buying guns for home defense, concealed carry, and hunting. It's been going on for several years. A 2014 survey by the National Shooting Sports Foundation uh, found that women gun owners uh, had 72% of them had personally purchased a gun and they weren't being bought guns by their significant others. They were buying them themselves. And uh, women were spending an average of nearly $900 a year on guns, over $400 a year on accessories. So it's clear women are the fastest growing segment of the firearms market. And joining us today are the owners of Guns for Gals, a specialty firearms boutique that just celebrated the grand opening of their new store in McKinney, Texas. Cassie and Patrick Coburn, welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio. Thank you so much for having us on. Yes, thank you. Well, tell us a little about yourselves. What's uh, tell us about your background with guns? What what did you do before Guns for Gals? Well, we we both have a sort of a different background with guns. I was raised uh, with farmers and hunters, and our family was accustomed to long guns and things like that. But I had never really had my own semi-auto before uh, a couple years before we started our business, and uh, we were in the restaurant industry. <laughs> we worked. 
long hours and late nights and walked out to our car in the dark, and that's kind of a little bit of what sparked us along this journey. And Patrick, you had you you said you had something happen to a coworker that that got you interested in in concealed carry. Yes, one of my coworkers was robbed at gunpoint in the parking lot late at night after closing time, and it uh, definitely inspired me to start considering how I'm going to protect myself because my family doesn't have a background with firearms. This really never came up. They uh, they just they weren't anti or pro. They just didn't own any. You mention on the website your experience in shopping for guns as a woman, Cassie, you, you, you being the motivation for founding Guns for Gals. Tell us a little about that experience, what it, what it was like as a woman in a sort of, quote-unquote, a man's world, going out and trying to buy a gun for self-defense. Oh, for sure. Well, we were we were looking uh, for a gun for me, Patrick and I were, and, and I was really being ignored. And it, it didn't matter if we were at a show or at a gun store, it was really hard to get the uh, the attention of of a salesperson, they would I'd ask them a question, and then they would answer Patrick, <laughs> and and we were looking around at the other customers, and there was a good third of the people in these stores and at the shows were other women who were having the same problem as I was, and uh, and my husband made a good point. He was like, you know, I'm I'm a lot less likely to be attacked late at night walking out of the mall than you know than than I am. And so we sat down and talked about it, and we're like, let's see if we can do something about this. So you founded uh, Guns for Gals in 2013, and you've been selling at area gun shows. Where did you get the idea to open your own brick-and-mortar firearms boutique? That's something that we've been wanting to do since the beginning, really. we It, it was just a growing process until now, and we wanted people to have a place to go. Um, because the... The gun show audience is very different from the gun store audience, and a lot of the people who are searching for a firearm, they, they never walk into a gun show. A lot of women, I'm surprised, don't even know that there are such things, and so we wanted to give them a place where they could put their hands on things and ask us questions in and, and kind of a more uh, one-on-one environment without having to feel embarrassed about not knowing as much as the guy next to them, you know, because we, we get a lot of folks who are afraid of... Um, asking questions and, and, and being treated like they're they're not very smart. So we wanted them to have a place where they could come and feel a little bit more welcomed. And that's tough in a gun show. It, uh, when you're jostled and you've got people all around you and everybody's kind of hustling back and forth and the, and the guy behind the counter is trying to deal with 20 or 30 people looking and touching his guns. Yeah, it's high traffic and it's it's high stress for the people behind the counter and it's it's kind of like a like a, a whirlwind of people, and, and it's hard to get a full shopping experience. And that. I mean, it's a great atmosphere, it, and it's a lot of fun because you meet a lot of people who are in the same boat as you are, but but for a first-time buyer, it's intimidating. Now, I mentioned at the beginning um, of, this, of this segment the, the growth in women owning guns, and, and when the trend first started, you saw gun companies sort of pandering to women by just throwing colors on their existing product lines. You know, here's the same gun with a little pink, a little purple, but it's still the same gun, and it's it's not made for women. And obviously, women are different, thank goodness. So for women, what I think the industry didn't recognize, it's, it's as much about function as it is about styles. Do you see that changing? Do you see them starting to recognize um, that fact and, and changing their products and their marketing? Oh, absolutely. They've, uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a gun the color that you really love. But at the same time, you have to like the gun. You know, the, some of the smaller guns don't really suit the need of the customer. You know, they'll come in and they, they need some one-on-one time to explain the differences because a lot of times they'll gravitate towards the little tiny gun, not realizing that, you know, that's purpose-built to fit in a pocket, whereas the larger weapon might be what they need for home protection. It really depends on their need, and the manufacturers are starting to see that women have different needs than guys. They most definitely do, and they're starting to manufacture products that are less recoil, but a good medium size, or depending on the customer, of course. Yeah, we tell a lot of ladies, you know, that we see a lot of guys who like blued versus stainless, and so why can't you like green more than pink? Or, you know, I just, <laughs> it can be functional and still be attractive at the same time. Um, Patrick said something kind of funny the other day. He's like, you know, I've never had to shoot anybody, but I have to look at my gun every day, so I might as well like it. <laughs> <laughs> 
know, we were talking about this uh, yesterday a little bit. What what is important for women to consider when they're buying their first gun for concealed carry? What what are some of the things that you talk to uh, your customers about? What are they thinking about, or what do they need to consider for a woman? What are that's different from when a man goes out and buys a gun? When when we know that that's what her goal is to have it on her person, the the most important thing is to have it fit in their hand right, and we'll. Well, tell them, look, just pick up anything that looks good to you. What what appeals to you? What are you drawn towards? Feel free to pick it up and, and see how it feels in your hand because if it doesn't feel right in your hand, you've got to move on to the next thing. But um, we always make sure that they can rack the slide, that they can pull the trigger, and just simple things like that that aren't the same for every firearm because if they might really, really like this one gun and it feels good in their hand, but then the trigger pull is just outrageous. And so we're like, okay, let's move on to the next thing then because – there, are, every woman is is shaped a little different, and and every woman has different strengths than the next. But you know, the, this one individual woman who's asking us questions, it's it's got to fit right, it's got to fit her needs, and it's got to feel like it was made for her, like a good pair of jeans, you know. And that gets back to some, the shortcoming of the 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 gun show environment too, because when you're in that environment and every gun is strapped and you can't pull the trigger. You can't rack the slide. So a woman in that environment can't really fully test out a firearm to see, does this thing fit me well? In your in your store, they can do that. Well, and two, we've noticed a big difference with just in the gun shows, you can't have the magazines in. Um, And that makes a huge difference on the feel of a gun. And, uh, and I mean, there's, the gun show industry has been absolutely fantastic to us, but, but there are certain things that when you don't know exactly what you're there to find, that the not having the magazine in and not being able to do a couple of just basic function tests, it's, it, it gives you a different picture of what you're bringing home than what you might actually be bringing home. And when I stopped by last week, you talked about your sales philosophy, which I think is fantastic. You said you will not sell a gun if you wouldn't own it yourself. If you can't recommend it personally, you won't even stock it. That is 100% true. Like if we don't have confidence in that weapon, then we are not going to sell it to you. No. Because we're talking about your life. You're going to need this weapon to defend yourself in a moment of crisis. And we want to sell you something that we believe will work. Oh, yeah. If it's, if it's a very inexpensive but not well-made product. Jam-O-Matic. Jam-O-Matic, we call them. <laughs> uh, just, just a poor quality. And that, that includes some expensive guns. There's a few out there on the market that are expensive. They're just not well-made. Uh, we've seen, you know, other people do quality tests and things of that nature. If we know it's going to let you down... We're not going to sell it. So tell us about the experience. What is it going to be like at Guns for Gals? We've talked a little about it, kind of alluded to it. What makes what makes Gun f- Guns for Gals, the store, different from other stores? What what kind of products do you carry? What's what's the whole atmosphere, the feeling going to be like? We've tried to stock a couple of things that weren't just made for women, but were made by women, because there are a lot of up-and-coming women in the industry who've got incredible ideas on products that are, are a little bit more practical for us for concealed carry and for home defense and things like that. But but the biggest thing that we focus on is just listening to our customers because that's the thing that I had a hard time finding is somebody who would, instead of saying, oh, well, hey, little lady, this is what you need, saying, hey, what are you here for? What are, you need, what are your needs? And that's what we're trying to, to really drive home is that when a woman walks through our doors, and she's like, hey, I don't really know firearms all that much. Can you help me? That we can help her and, and find her on the right path that, that, that gets her the gun in her hands that she's comfortable with. Or if a woman comes in and she's like, I know all about these guns, I'm just looking for this one in particular. We want her to feel confident that she's not going to be treated like a novice just because she's a lady, you know. But we try to keep a bunch of things in stock that are attractive, but that are also functional, that, that women have asked us for in particular. And guys, don't be afraid. We no. have guns for you, too. No, we sell the guys. <laughs> Absolutely. No problem there. Um, we do We do have some of the harder-to-find items. Yeah. We, we go to the big box stores and take a look at what they have and uh, cross-compare and make sure that we have those items that the ladies are looking for that the big box stores just don't carry or are sold out of. And we struggle really hard to find those items and keep them in stock. With Christmas coming up next week... Tell us about your favorite products, some of the things that, that um, you recommend or that you're, you're selling a lot of customers are, are interested in. What are your top sellers? Well, as 
far as uh, accessories go, the biggest seller that we've had right now for you guys coming in to buy something for their wives, the Hidden Heat um, the wrap. We have this Hidden Heat wrap that's a, a holster that goes around the waist, and it's got a couple of pockets, and it's it's pretty, but it's comfortable. We saw a lot of those. We also saw a lot of a product called the Handy Racker, um, which we got because I couldn't rack the slide on a lot of firearms. I had wrist surgery, and I really struggled. And we get a lot of ladies who are arthritic or they have carpal tunnel. And we have um, this product that you can get. It, it assists you with racking the slide. And that one's been pretty good for stocking stuffers. Um, it's also great when you're cleaning the Oh, gun. gosh, yeah, yeah. You can put it on the gun and use it to hold the gun in place while you disassemble it. It's really neat. What about uh, what are the top selling or or your your most recommended firearms? What are the the guns that are are that women are most interested in or that that you seem to sell the most of? Well, when it when it comes to the nine millimeter, the Walter CCP has been very very popular because of the uh, reduced recoil on the nine millimeter. The Walter's just really done a great job with that gun. Uh, as for the 380 caliber, the, the Stig 238, it continues to be such a strong seller. It, it's a great little weapon, really well made, but yet small and compact, accurate, and actually fun to shoot. Most of the little tiny guns are not fun to shoot, no. whereas that one is actually fun to shoot. And uh, a lot of people will buy the little tiny gun first at somewhere else, the $200 gun, then they'll come in and talk to us, end up with the stig, and sing the praises of how great that little gun is. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> that exact same thing happened to us back when we were customers, and uh, we still have that little tiny gun, and we we wouldn't sell it to somebody else. No. We wouldn't do that no. to them. No. The Walter PK380 is also a really big seller. That one just, again, we have a lot of customers who have wrist strength issues, and the PK was just, it was just made for people who have hand strength problems. The the slide is smooth, and the trigger is nice and crisp, and they've done some magic with their uh, mag release. It's just a neat little gun. That one's uh, a really, that was a really popular firearm for women, especially with a little bit longer fingers, the larger hands. They have a a nice fit with that gun. I'd say the the new up and comer would be the Browning. The Browning yeah, the 380. Yeah. Yeah, I want to fire that one too. People are sort of discovering that and really, really liking it. The way it feels in their hand, the high quality of the manufacturing process. A lot of the guys will pick it up and it's got that 1911 feel they love, but in a smaller size that fits a lot of different ladies' hands. We sold quite a few of those to women. In the spirit of the season, before we wrap up, what are both of you hoping that Santa brings you? What gun-shaped gift is? Uh, are you hoping Santa leaves under the tree for you this year? Well, for me, that would be the Beretta ARX, the uh, 556223. I just really have been had my eye on that thing for more than a year now. And uh, I love the idea that I can take the whole thing apart without any tools. I can hand it to my left-handed friend and he can switch it over. It will go either way. Really versatile. I really have been wanting one of those for quite some time. Your left-eyed wife. <laughs> Yeah, now that we've been talking about the Browning, I kind of <laughs> think I'm changing my mind on mine. But no, we've our our uh, our shop mate has a series of Trichicons RMRs that I've been kind of eyeballing for a little bit. Yeah, they just God, and and I really don't even know what I want to put it on yet. I I've got the um, Smith and Wesson 3913 Lady Smith that I open carry at the shop a lot, which would be kind of practical to put on that. But I don't really want to. It's so pretty just by itself. How about for the kids? The kids uh, do your kids shoot too? Yeah, they do actually. They shoot more often than we do lately. They, uh, the two youngest, we started them off on daisies, and then uh, they've been shooting. We've got a little heritage bird neck twenty two LR that they've been blowing up tomatoes with in our backyard. <laughs> and the uh, the brownie twenty two is next, and they're they've been okay. What can we shoot next? And when can we take this thing out? Patrick has a Henry survival rifle that I think they would really enjoy too. A little twenty two. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you both for coming onto the show. I really appreciate it. So tell us, how can listeners find out more about uh, Guns for Gals and the new store? Well, we're located at uh, 2035 Central Circle in Suite 108 in McKinney, but we also sell online at www.gunsforgals.com. And I'll add that uh, information to the show notes so people can find you. Cassie and Patrick Coburn are the uh, husband and wife team behind the new Guns for Gals Firearms Boutique in McKinney, Texas. Thank you guys for coming on the show. I wish you uh, continued success and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you. Merry Christmas to y'all too. Thank you so much for having us on. Thank you and Merry Christmas. 
You're listening to Armed Lutheran Radio, a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Welcome back to this special Christmas wish list episode of Armed Lutheran Radio. As you know, Cook's Holsters has been the primary sponsor for Armed Lutheran Radio this year. I'm very grateful for that support. I found Cook's Holsters, I think it was back in 2013 when I did a series of holster company reviews. I love their products. I love them so much I became a, a Cook's Holsters dealer. I own more Cook's Holsters than I can count, and I'm closing in on having one for almost have one for every gun that I own. <laughs> Uh, in the years that I've been using Cook's holsters, the product line has grown. The number of available colors has grown. The mounting and carry options has grown. And the company has outgrown its required workspace twice, moving from the owner's home to its current location. Um, joining me today, finally, is the man himself, the uh, founder and president of Cook's holsters. Bob Cook, welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio. Thank you very much. Um, as we get started today, I guess uh, the first uh bit of business we need to take care of is we're going to go ahead and announce that we're going to go ahead and uh, be the uh, primary sponsor of the uh, radio show for next year as well. We're going to go ahead and uh, join you for another year um, and also sponsor your uh, the shooting, all the IDPA shoots and the different things. So um, we, we're on board. We like what you're doing. We, we believe in what you're doing as well. So we're going to we're going to sign up for another year of supporting you in any way we can. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, it's an honor to um, to have you on the show. And it, it's it, I'm so grateful for the support uh, that you've shown the podcast and, and the blog over the years. And uh, since we first talked, I think it was back in 2013, and I bought my first Cook's Holsters and wrote an article about you and the company. Um, let's talk about you. Um, tell me about your experience, how you got started. You're not a gun guy by trade. You, you're not military or police. You love guns, but how did you, how long have you been around guns? Where, where did you get your start with guns? Well, I, I bought my first firearm just a little over three, three and a half years ago. Um, I had a, a little run in with, uh, with some locals um, that turned out to be nothing, but realized that if I had had a firearm on me, I would have been probably a little bit more confident going into the the, the situation. And uh, I was thankful for the outcome, but uh, at that point I kind of purposed that uh, I would pursue uh, purchasing a firearm, uh, which I then very next day actually bought one. Uh, Georgia has some pretty, uh, pretty good uh, gun ownership laws. I was able to purchase one uh, private party from a buddy and, and purchase my first firearm and figured I would go down to the gun store and buy a holster and, and start that challenge. So first firearm three and a half years ago. Um, don't get to shoot as often as I would like to, but um, definitely, definitely a gun guy now. My background is actually the uh, automotive industry. Uh, I'm an ASC master certified technician for 25 years now, and um, I thought I would be working on cars the rest of my life. Well, and I've enjoyed watching your little projects on Facebook. <laughs> yes, I, I'm getting back. I'm in a place now. I'm, I'm, I'm a little more comfortable in life. I'm, a, I'm an older gentleman now. So um, the things that I enjoyed doing when I was younger that I couldn't afford to do at the level I'd like, I'm at a place now where I can kind of start playing with those things again. So I've got a few hobbies and some things that I'm playing with. And, it, and it's a lot more fun now because I'm doing it more out of uh, enjoyment than I am out of necessity. Great. What was that first gun that you bought? It happened to be a Springfield uh, XD in a four inch, the service model. Oh, okay. All right. Good gun. So how did you get started? What, what gave you the idea to start making holsters? Well, as I mentioned, I, I went down the very next day, purchased the fire after that I purchased the firearm and figured I'd go down to my local gun store and uh, pick me up a holster. I thought it was going to be just that easy. And I very, very quickly learned that, uh, I understand why everybody in the gun industry, basically, that is a gun guy, has that box of holsters. Um, the, the choices at the gun store were very limited, so I began an online search. I've always been a Google guy. I love my internet, uh, so I very quickly acquired quite a few holsters and found out that none of them did everything I wanted them to do. <laughs> so and you... every, everybody, everybody that owns a holster or owns a firearm probably can tell that exact same story. So <laughs> I basically took my box of holsters and sat down one evening and figured out the options and, and features that I liked and figured out the parts that I didn't like and designed my own holster. What was the first one that you made? It was for my um, Kimber, uh, Kimber Solo was the very first one I did. Um, I was looking for a small carry gun. It was uh, I got a really good deal on it. Um, 
it was probably maybe three, two or three months after I purchased my very first gun. So I had acquired a few at that point. And um, so I made it for that small carry gun, thought it would be easy, ordered a, a kit online. I figured I'm a hands-on guy. I've got lots of tools, um, made my own and kind of never looked back. So how did you go from making one for yourself to selling them to other people? Um, the uh, dealer, the gun store where I was a, a member. Mm-hmm. And where we went and did all of our shooting and, and hung out there and got to know some of the people there and asked our, our questions early on about the carry process and getting my carry permit. They started asking me, uh, they saw my holster on me one day in the gun store, the owner of the gun store did, right. and asked me, you know, what do you carry in there? And I told him what firearm I was carrying. He goes, no, no, no. What are you carrying it in? I said, well, it's a holster. He said, where did you? Yeah, of course, asked where I got it. And I said, well, I made it. <laughs> and he asked me, may I see it? So I handed him the the uh, the holster, and, and he was just absolutely flabbergasted with with what it was. It was just a plain black Kydex holster. I didn't think anything uh, was special about it, but uh, his, his words to me were, "He says you have no idea." So he <laughs> says, "I will sell these in my store if you're willing to uh, to make them for us." So my very first, I'm, I'm always always about efficiency. So my very first packaging scheme or idea was my label that said Cook's Holsters was also my catalog. Every single holster for every single firearm that I made fit on a four by six label. <laughs> and I'm guessing it was about 12 or 15 different models, maybe, and only our gun models. And then only, of course, one style holster, which was our, our inside the waistband holster. So it was, it was, it's just surreal to kind of look back and, and see those labels. Now I still have the labels on my computer and some of the pictures we took early on. Uh, Facebook was a thing back then. So Facebook it reminds me on a regular basis. Uh, it just recently reminded me three years ago about the very first firearm I purchased and showed me a picture of that same Springfield that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> and so you started, you started making, you set up a workshop in your, in your basement or? I did. I started in the basement of my home in about 400 square feet, <laughs> uh, cleared out some of my tools and some of the storage area and just made enough of a work area, built a couple of benches and had my own little, you know, I designed the holster. So I also had to design the tools that made it. And I didn't, I purposed not to go online and find out how everybody did something because I didn't want to copy what everybody else was doing. That wasn't what I was getting in the business for. I, I obviously didn't like everything that was out there, so there's no reason to copy something that I didn't like. So I purposed not to go see how people were doing. I came up with my own way of doing things and learned about the product just through experimentation and what temperatures worked and what tools worked and came up with my own way of doing it, and it has worked out very well. Well, how long after you started selling your holsters did it take to run out of that space? We ran out very quickly. I, I stayed in there longer than I probably should have. As soon as I hired my third employee, uh, we decided that it was time to move out of there and uh, foray into a, uh, a, a full-time facility that was dedicated to the, uh, the holster making process. So we, uh, we were in there maybe, maybe six months. From the time I made the first holster till I quit my full-time job was about three months. And then a few months after that, we actually moved into our first building. And you, and then you outgrew that space too, and now you're in an even bigger space, aren't you? Correct. We moved into about uh, 1,800 square feet, and I remember taking all of my tools out of my basement and set them in the middle of the facility the <laughs> first day we moved in there. We, we moved it all in one load, and we set it all up in the middle, all my tools, all my stands, and I took a picture of it, and I laughed at myself. I said, there is no way we will ever, one, fill this space, or two, need anything bigger. And we stayed in that place exactly a year. We moved in in February, and the following February, we had to find another facility, which we're in now, which is 4,000 square feet. And I'm actually renting another building right now that's 2,600 square feet. So we're in about 6,600 square feet now. And wow. we take delivery on the second building January 1st. Wow. Now talk about the hol- the holsters you offer. They've, they've changed quite a bit since the early designs. They're, they're awesome. I, I, I had one of those early inside the waistband holsters. Let's start with concealed carry. What, what options do you offer for concealed carry? Well, we have, uh, of course, offered the, uh, our number one mover and will probably always will be, always has been, is our inside the waistband with adjustable belt clip. Mm-hmm. It's, our, it's our flagship product. It is a, a product that allows you to carry a, a firearm inside your waistband. It has uh, a really nice belt clip that uh, is available an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters. That has an adjustable cant angle and adjustable retention. So it works very well for the appendix all the way back to the 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock position uh, for a right-handed shooter. It is uh, a very simple product. It's uh, typically made out of 080 Kydex, and it just works well. We do it for over 290 different firearms, and it just is the simplest product. 
I don't have to write an instruction manual for it. It is something I can put into a first-time shooter's hand and give them a safe firearm, and they can figure out how to put it in, take it out, without me having to give any kind of uh, input. So it is a very simple product. So that is our number one mover. After that, everything is a variation on a theme from that. We do a small of the back holster, which is basically that same holster turned around for a palm out draw. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of ventured out into some of the other clips. That is a polymer clip holster. There's some new products on the line, the Ulti Clip. So we designed a product around the Ulti Clip uh, that works very well. Mm -hmm. Again, the shell of the holster remains virtually identical um, as our inside the waistband adjustable. We just put different types of belt clips on it from an appendix carry position to the Ulti Clip to the metal uh, over the belt clips to the behind the belt clips. But all of them are a variation on a theme. They all start with that adjustable retention uh, Kydex shell that the, snap, that the firearm snaps into. Yeah, I love uh, that's I love that holster. Um, it's so easy to take that and take it off, stow the gun, put it in your you know quick access safe, or put it in the console of your car. Get back in the car, put it back in without ever you know handling the gun. It's fantastic. Correct. That was the number one thing when we designed that holster. We've actually taken the time and effort to make sure that every inside the waistband product that we sell that's a primary inside the waistband carry product, uh, we cover the magazine releases hundred percent. Mm -hmm. And we cover our trigger guards 100%. There's lots of companies out there that'll tell you you don't need to. You can leave the area behind the trigger uncovered, but then that allows possibly foreign material getting in there. And if something's behind your trigger and you go to pull the trigger, you're going to have a problem. Right. Uh, we cover our mag releases because when I pull my firearm, I've used other holsters during that short period of time. And I've had magazines fall out in public or come loose and go to pull the firearm to put it away, to stow it, as you say. And uh, the magazine has fallen out because that mag release has been pushed during that time, mm -hmm. uh, unbeknownst to me. So those were some of the things that we took into consideration. So all of our inside the waistband holsters are designed with that in mind, keeping the magazines in and keeping the triggers covered. How about outside the waistband? Those have changed quite a bit. I love the Comfort Series holster. Yes, the Comfort Series is probably the only holster we've actually named. And I, 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 everything else we just call inside the waistband, outside the waistband. We just call it what it is. We don't, we don't have all these uh, fancy names like some of the other companies do. And I, I have to look on a, a map to figure out what they are. When somebody calls and asks for an inside the waistband holster, I know what they're talking about. So the Comfort Series is the only one we really named because it just didn't seem fair to call it an outside the waistband holster because we departed so, so far from the normal design. We took the uh, the comfort of the the hybrid holsters that have been around forever with a leather backing, mm -hmm. um, where they do the 90-10 split, where most of the firearm is to the outside, and and you have the leather to the back. Well, we did we didn't like that. We don't like the way leather wears on firearms. In our personal opinion, we don't like leather on our body. We like the small. We don't like the big area touching our body. So we thought, you know what? Let's see if we can't get that curved shape and everything of a hybrid holster, but make it 100% out of Kydex. And the only way we could do that was to come up with a way to make it curved at the same time. So when we mold our holsters, we mold the curve of your body uh, and the 90-10 split all at the same time. It's fantastic. It, it's, it is absolutely the most comfortable holster I've ever had. Uh, and you can, you can switch it and actually switch the clips and, and wear it inside the waistband as well. That's correct. Because of the way the curve is set to your body, um, it is the closest riding outside the waistband. So when you, you know, if this, with a simple hardware change, take the wings off, which I absolutely love. It's my favorite piece of hardware we have. Yes. Um, and turn that into the open loops, which we create in-house. Um, it actually allows you to slide the holster inside your waistband and then the belt clips over your belt. So it's, a only, it's the only product we make that can be carried both inside the waistband and outside the waistband. It's, and it's a great starter holster. We actually had a customer come in today that said, hey, I've never carried a gun before. What do you recommend I start with? I said, well, this would be the best because you can virtually carry it anywhere on your body and it's going to give you an idea of what works for you. And then we'll once you get comfortable carrying, we'll find something that maybe fits you more more specific your more specific carry style but it's a great place to start and that's that's where we start a lot of people in their carry yeah you can't go wrong with it. i used it all year in in uh, idpa and it, it just it's fantastic and like you said with the the wings are great because they hold the the holster right up against your body it's such a nice um it doesn't seem to dangle away from your body like so many outside the waistband holsters do that's correct and with the the solid kydex back and front it's a very stiff yeah. Uh, support reasons. Yeah. There, it doesn't sag after a period of time. There's a lot of nice products out there, but once you put leather or any kind of flexible material in there, it just can't maintain its shape forever. The nice thing about Kydex, it's the same size today, tomorrow, two weeks, two yeah. months, two years. It's always going to be the same size. It's a great product. Now you've also got some specialty models for competition. You've added, you've added a surface mount and a boot carry as well. That is correct. Um, I, I was looking for a way to carry 
something on my ankle, and I'm not an ankle holster guy. And after doing some research, I found some some older holsters a long time ago that people were doing where they were lacing them up as part of their boot. And I go, you know, that's a great idea. So I was driving to work one day and I kind of designed the holster in my head. So we did a combination. That's the only product in our building that uses leather. And we use a small leather strap Mm -hmm. that's about six inches long. And that allows that curved holster. We took our Comfort Series holster and scaled it down substantially. Our Comfort Series is designed to fit waist from about 24 to about 44 inches. So the curve is relatively gradual. Mm -hmm. On an ankle or a boot, it needed to be much more severe. So we built a new jig with a smaller curve behind it. It still has the 90-10 splits. You get all the comfort, but it's designed to fit around a boot or a leg as opposed to your waist. So it gives you the ability to carry that firearm on your boot. We actually have quite a few police departments that issue it to their deputies to carry their Glock 42s and 43s um, as backup while they're on duty. They're that comfortable. Nice. And then the surface mount you mentioned is uh, our solution for carrying possibly in vehicles or Mm -hmm. under a desk, anywhere where you just need a flat back. Nobody makes a flat back holster. It's just not something that's designed. So we give you the flat back holster. We give you a couple of holes in it on either side where it can be screwed into place. We actually equip it with the uh, loops or the hook side of uh, the Velcro. Mm Mm-hmm. So it can be Velcroed inside most of the Maxpedition bags and the different ma- man bags and <laughs> all that already have the soft Velcro inside the uh, the pockets. Yep. This will actually attach right to that. As well as the two holes we mount on there are the same hardware dimensions as all the hard- hardware in our store. So if you had to put belt loops or belt clips or came up with just some any kind of uh, mounting, we've, we've had all kinds of different solutions. People put in the pockets of their cars or whatever the case may be. But having one flat side just gives you a great way to orient it in whatever mounting style you're looking for. So how do you come up with a new design? You, you mentioned earlier you don't look at what other people are doing. So Correct. how do um, you come up with a new idea for a new product? Usually it's because every single thing besides our inside the waistband holster has been directly from a customer request. A customer will simply call and say, you know what, I'm looking to do this, this, and this. Do you have something that will do it? And if the answer is yes, we'll point them in the right direction. If it's no and we get enough requests, I'll design something. The most recent uh, example of that is our AR mag carrier. I have been putting off doing a mag carrier for AR magazines for two years. I've had people asking and I just never had a design in my head that really did something that everybody else wasn't already doing. And I'm not an AR guy. I'm not a three gun guy. I have a couple of ARs and I'm not going to carry an extra mag because I usually carry my AR into the range in a bag. I take all my magazines out of my bag. I shoot, I put them away. I've never had a reason to carry a a magazine. But I had a, a gentleman who does some protection service call and say, we need a AR magazine carrier that can carry a loaded magazine on our belt horizontally. And I took it as a challenge. I said, you know what, I can do this. So I took our wings that you're so familiar with, made a magazine carrier like the ones that we currently carry in our store that you're familiar with. And I put the bolt pattern on the back so that you can take the wings and mount them horizontally or vertically so that you can actually take the exact same holster, move four screws and turn the exact same mag carrier on its side. And now it's a horizontal AR-15 mag carrier as well as a vertical based on where you put the har- how you put the hardware on. So I took it as a challenge and we designed that product and it's been received very well. Because of the wings, it rides incredibly close. The footprint is so incredibly small that you can butt them right up next to each other on your belt and carry multiple. Or you get to do like this gentleman was trying to do, you can carry one horizontal. Now they're pretty long, so you're probably not going to do more than one, but you can do it and you can conceal carry an AR-15 magazine under typical clothing. What are the newest uh, gun models that you've got molds for currently? Because we are a mold company, we purpose, we're on the short list of most of the gun stores in our area and the, the dealers in our area. So whenever something new comes in, we, we're one of the very first to get it if we don't get it even early. So we have the LCP2, which is a, a brand new one that came out. The Ruger American Compact just came out with their 9mm. We've got that. Uh, it would be very difficult for you to find any of the new ones that we don't currently have. You don't use blue guns to make your holsters. You actually go out and buy the real thing, which I th- which impressed me from the very beginning. When I needed holsters for my competition guns, you went to it. You said, all right, I'm going to the gun show this weekend. I'll pick up a couple. And you got the exact guns and made the molds. That is correct. We are we're Cook's gun molds as well. Besides Cook holsters, we actually have a business, and we actually help a lot of the smaller holster companies out there that, that can't afford to go and buy the guns. We actually sell replicas of the guns, which is... Basically similar to a blue gun, but they're accurate in size. 
because we make them. And then we make them prepped for Kydex manufacturing already as, as well. So we have many, many, many holster companies that use our molds to make their holsters. And we as a company have purposed before any holster leaves our business, we put a real gun in it if it's at all possible. What is, or what's your personal carry gun? What do you carry? You know, it, it changes. I, I own over 220 different firearms. Um, I have a few favorites. Uh, I've become, uh, I like simplicity. So the, the single stack XDS and shield have, have always been on my list. I, I love the 320 uh, compact that SIG has put out. My latest one is a uh, Timberwolf is a company that's, or Lone Wolf is a uh, accessory company for Glock. And they build some uh, aftermarket frames called their Timberwolf. And I actually am carrying a Glock 23 with one of their frames on it right now. That has been my carry gun for the last probably couple of months. Of all of those 200 guns that you've owned, if you had to pick one, which one's your favorite? Uh, the one that you actually mentioned in the email, that Sphinx. Sphinx SDP Compact um, is probably the nicest shooting uh, imported by Chris, so you know it's a high-end gun. I got a really good deal on it. Uh, it just kind of fell in my lap. I said, I can't not have this. Uh, we are the only mold company that you can actually order a mold for that gun for, so it is probably my favorite in it. The color on it, I'm a sucker for colored guns. Yeah, I saw that one a birthday present uh, post on Facebook, and I thought, oh, man, that is yes. that looks awesome. It is. It's a great gun. All right. In the spirit of Christmas, have you got any gun-related, gun-shaped presents you're hoping to find under the tree this year for yourself, or your, your wife, or the kids? As, as I alluded to there, I'm very much a sucker for the colored guns. <laughs> and because I do own so many, it has become a challenge for my wife to find guns that I don't have. <laughs> so what we've found ourselves doing is purchasing... Um, the newer color guns. I recently purchased her a Glock 43 that went through Lipsy's. That's the new, um, it's an off green frame and a bright silver uh, titanium slide. Really kind of an odd combination you'd think till you see it and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So m my thing now is I'm trying to purchase all of the colored ones. I have a, the P07 by CZ in the sniper gray. I recently picked up the XDS in the sniper gray. So I'm always on the lookout and, and hopeful for any of the, the, the guns that I already have, possibly in different colors. <laughs> so that that's kind of the direction I've gone. It's just difficult to find something that I don't have already now. It's just, it's, it's become ridiculous. Um, I stand there in the gun store and go through the case, not anymore looking for what I do. What I want is looking for something I don't already have. <laughs> it's a terrible problem to have. Well, Bob Cook is the founder and owner of Cook's Holsters, a maker of fine custom Kydex holsters with a lifetime warranty and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, as you've heard me say all year this year. He's the main sponsor for the podcast, the Armed Lutheran Radio Shooting Team as well. Bob, thank you so much for your support. Merry Christmas to you and Crystal and the kids, and, and thank you for uh, continuing to support us in 2017. Well, you're very welcome, and thank you for what you do and, and the, the knowledge and the uh, information that you're getting out there and making available to everybody. And, and uh, Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year. And I look forward to another year of partnership and uh, seeing where we are sitting down and doing this again next year and seeing where we are next year. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's going to wrap it up for another episode of Armed Lutheran Radio. Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you to our contributors, Aaron Israel, Mia Anstein, Pastor John Bennett, and Sergeant Bill Sylvia, and to our special guests, Cassie and Patrick Coburn, and to our sponsor, Bob Cook of Cook's Holsters. You know, as we talk about all these gifts and our wish list, let's not forget the real reason for the season, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, we forgive each other because he first forgave us. We give to one another because God first gave to us a Savior in his Son, Jesus Christ. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas with your family, with your loved ones. Merry Christmas to all of you from all of us here at Armed Lutheran Radio. We'll see you for episode 50 next week. Until then, keep shooting, keep praying. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Armed Lutheran Radio. For show notes, 
be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and tune in. This podcast is made possible by Cook's Holsters and contributions from listeners like you.